it is a very good time to be hooked on Hunt Showdown as a long-awaited quality of life patch 1.9 has just dropped last week and it looks like the next in-game event is just around the corner. The event promises to be more unique than our last couple ones and the game is running better than ever. Got hit pretty hard. Gotta pull back. Ah, oh, behind you. How many are there? How many are there? This is unbelievable. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Clutch. He was using a bounty to revive him from the wall. This is like killing the team in a thousand yards. Okay, that one's got to be dead now. That one you just took down Dave. Oh, oh he's got a shot. Oh. No. Uh, <laughs> oh, man. Let's talk some first about the upcoming Serpent's Moon event. I don't want to rely too much on the data mining and leaks that we've gotten so far, so I want to stick to mostly official teases and info. But what we know is obviously this is going to be a serpent themed event. And Crytek has promised in the past that we're going to see less of the run around the map and smash monolith style events. So this event is supposed to have a new gameplay element that's not smashing something. The leaks are suggesting some kind of snake sacrifice on an altar, perhaps, but again, don't want to spoil too much, so we're going to wait for the official reveal for what those gameplay elements actually might be. We do actually know quite a bit about the new weapons coming in this event, one of which is the Romero Alamo variant. That's the long barrel Romero shotgun, but with a special side gate loading system, uh, kind of like a side loading magazine that allows you to have a slightly faster rate of reloading compared to that single shot Romero with just the single break action. It's basically a spring loaded reload assist. We've also now seen multiple teases for a single shot Sparks pistol, which I personally hope is going to cut down on the amount of rifle caliber uppercut pistols that you're currently seeing in game. Right now, everybody who's anybody is carrying an uppercut. This Sparks variant is going to give you a different option for a rifle caliber pistol. Beyond the new weapons and gameplay, we're also going to have, of course, some new legendary hunters and quite a few legendary skin updates, including some tools and consumables that have been kind of neglected before. Again, don't want to dive too deep into the leaks, but some of these look really, really good. That's all we really know about the event so far, so let's put that aside and talk about the 1.9 quality of life patch, which is already live and contains a wild amount of fixes and improvements across the board. There's some big bullet point stuff here, but two of the changes and fixes on this list outside of the big stuff actually uh, are my favorite changes. One of those changes is for the Centennial Rifle. That's the lever action chambered in medium instead of compact ammo. They finally gave this thing a nice 20% rate of fire buff and it feels great. It's always had a great muzzle velocity compared to some of the other rifles that I also enjoy in the game that use medium ammo like the Vettorelli. But with that rate of fire tweak, the Centennial is finally competitive against some of the other options in game. Feels really, really good. Oh, I'm down. Oh, damn. I heard that, that was a silence shot. shot. It's in the tree line. He was about 18 meters away from me in the tree line. I actually heard the report on that one. Yeah, yeah. I heard it as well. Ooh, nice. Uh. Careful. Nice. <laughs> nope. <laughs> nice. <laughs> oh, oh there's a third. No. No. Nah. <laughs> I also really appreciate that the hives, the 
poison bees have finally gotten their pathfinding fixed. I felt like there was an issue with this because when I first started playing the game a ton back in April, I felt like the hive bombs, the bee bombs, were tearing me up constantly. But when I finally unlocked them, they just never did anything for me. Well, it turns out the bees pathfinding has been glitched for about two months now. So that makes a lot of sense. And now you can actually use these things against enemies successfully. And it can work super well once again to track an enemy that you've hit with the hive bomb. Just like this. Sub's coming. On my right. One just passed me. Hit one hard. Missed him twice because I'm trash. Uh, I'm pull, pulling away from him. Downed him with a dual pistol shot. His body's burning too, thanks to the lantern. Pull him back to you. Oh, one's over here. Come in. Just got a hit. Just moving me. Going right. Bees are hitting him. He's over here. Okay. He's on this corner. He's got a shotgun. Got him. Me and I've Dooley's. Oh, shit. <laughs> No, I did. I, I swung and threw it to the left away. Put it down, Gene. Put it down. <laughs> so those are my two favorite fixes, but we also have those big bullet point items that people have been asking for for a long time. One of the biggest of which are updates to the player controller and their overall movement and desync. Your player character now clips and desyncs through things far less often. In fact, from playing about five or six hours of this patch so far, I've never seen it personally. No longer will you attempt to vault a hay bale or hop off of a platform and find yourself teleported backwards or clipping or glitching awkwardly up or down. The movement is so much smoother, guys. And as the devs promised, the overall issues of movement and occasional teleporting are more or less gone. I'm really impressed with how much better hunter movement feels in this patch. The devs have also lowered the match time to 45 minutes instead of a full hour. They said that only 1% of all matches went beyond that 45 minute mark, and that's gonna free up some server resources, and it appears to be helping. I too have only had, I think, one game that went for the full hour and was actually interesting. It was a pretty wild chase across the map, but losing just 15 minutes off of that and having some more pressure to finish the match isn't a big deal, I think. There's also now finally a region ping limit set kind of high to start out at 225 milliseconds. You will now actually be blocked from matchmaking outside of that ping limit unless you're playing with friends. And again, this is subject to additional tweaks and changing, but at least we have a, a start of a ping limit to help with some of the lag issues that we've seen over the last few months. Finally, we also have a brand new end of match screen for the teams. You have new icons and new time codes to show when you got shot, when you shot someone else, when someone grabbed the bounty, when they lost the bounty, when they extracted with the bounty. I love the fact that we have the time codes now, although I feel like they're counting in the wrong direction because in game it's quite confusing because your match timer is counting down, but on the end of match timer, it's counting up. So perhaps reverse that end of match timer to match your in-game map. I think that would just help you remember what happened when versus having to reverse it in your head. Also, while the additional info is welcomed, the icons and colors aren't great. There's just too many skull icons with very slight differences going on. Give us some headstone icons and some more contrasty colors to help quickly read the end of match screen so you can tell what happened. It's a great start, good info, just needs a bit of tweaking. And please, please Crytek, give us our end of match map where we can see what teams went where and what they were doing because we have some matches still where you extract and you go, what was everybody else doing out there? I really, really want to see that end of match map screen with players and their movements tracked on it. That would be awesome. 
One quick word of warning though, I've heard reports of two pretty serious bugs in this patch that can affect the balance of the gameplay. There's now apparently a glitch that if you pick up an enemy's weapon and his teammates are still alive, his teammates can still see the outline of that weapon that was on their teammate's body when it's in your hands, essentially giving them permanent wall hacks. So for now, just don't pick up weapons off of hunters unless you're sure that the rest of their team is dead. The second glitch is more minor, and that's that some of the marksman scopes have a really obnoxious blur effect as you're moving the scope back and forth. This is not apparently a intentional change, it's a effect bleed almost from the depth of field effect that takes place outside of the scope, but it can make it really really hard to track targets and move your scope around. Just be aware of those two current issues until they get hotfixed. Outside of those couple issues though, the game really is in a really, really great state right now. Probably the best state it's been in going into a new event from what I've heard from people who have been playing more than I have over the last couple of years, but I am 100% hooked now and looking forward to actually playing through a bunch of the events this year, especially the Halloween and Christmas events, which I've heard are pretty cool. If you guys are also out there playing 1.9, what do you think? Am I alone in thinking that this is actually a really solid patch? I'm curious. For now, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time.